Hello you. I just told you about Dungeon Craft, but uh, they, they have a new book. Yeah, I have a sponsor. Arguably too many, but I like this one. If you grabbed Ghosts of Saltmarsh or Descent into Avernus, you might be interested in Hell or High Water, their new expansion book with a whole new set of minis and terrain pieces. You can pre-order the book now for when it ships in just a couple months, or tide <laughs> yourself over with their Dungeon Craft book. Dungeon Craft has over a thousand pieces and comes in a nice little box now. If you get one before the holiday stock runs out, you also get a really pretty mimic pin. And I'll be super jealous of you because I only got a couple of stickers. Both books are 30 bucks, which is a great price, even for my stingy ass. Enjoy the video, refreshments are out front. Welcome to Basically Gith, one of the most well-written but least usable races in D&D. Their history begins with the Mind Flayer Empire, which was either a really long time ago or the distant future, or the parallel present, or it never happened at all. All we know is that relative to now, it was at a distant time. So distant, in fact, that all their history predating slavery is non-existent. Yeah, it's D&D. Everyone enslaves everyone. But at least they're more honest about it than our current cultures. So the Mind Flayers rounded up all these space elves, cracked the whip, and built the ultimate cosmic society. After a few failed rebellions, a slap on the wrist, and eons of freedomless existence, our queen sprang into action. Her name was Gith. Yeah, they call themselves the same name as their heroic ancestor. It's like if we walked around calling ourselves Adam- wait. Gith was the ultimate battle tactician, and single-handedly crushed 90% of the Big Brain Squid Society. She continued that mentality long after freeing her people, and the fundamental reality of society did its thing. They fell back into their old ways of enslaving each other. Xerthamon, whose name sounds like some kind of high-level Digimon, said, You were the chosen one. It was said that you would destroy the Mind Flayers, not become them. Bring balance to the Force, not leave it in darkness. And while they made the funny Star Wars reference, a couple of Mind Flayers quietly snuck into escape pods. Then Captain Gith, Civil War happened, and we got two sub-races. Space Pirates and Space Jedi. Uh, Jedi? Elf Jedi. Let's talk about those guys, because I like them a little bit more. This half of the race calls themselves Gith Zarai, named after the dude who said non-confrontation was better, and then got his head chopped off about a day later. This sub-race is so stupidly zen, they marched into limbo, which I will remind you bears the title Fundamental Realm of ever Journey Chaos and they built permanent temples that are held together by big brain energy. Xerthamon's most zealous acolyte, Menyar Ak, led that migration. This dude's so chill that he's too deep in meditation to die. Like forever. So he's a vegetable in a fridge, in the soup of chaos, as seen here in his grand fortress of... that word. He can't move, but an assassin sent here would be obliterated by his active mind, because he, he still think hard. All Githzerai are scholars, philosophers, and missionaries who want to share their mentality. They have planar recruiting bays hidden all over the place, kind of like interstellar Jehovah's Witnesses. They prefer to avoid both conflict and confrontation, but the Civil War and the Old Rebellion are still kind of happening, so they don't have a choice. The other side of this war being the Gith Kai, who are led by an equally half-dead ruler, the Lich Queen Vlacketh. Unlike that monk dude in a Void Freezer, she sits on a throne of Mind Flayer skulls as a power move. As a quick history, during the revolution, Vlacketh sent Gith to the Nine Hells to ask for help from the goddess of evil dragons. Only red dragons came back, and now they serve Vlacketh, who is a sort of vice president keeping the seat warm for Gith, who, um, didn't come back. There's a big secret there, and I strongly advise against asking about it. You'll probably die. After the Illithid Empire fell and the Death Star was destroyed, the Gith Yonkai went into the Astral Plane. Now their whole society is a zealous culture of Jedi Knights and Space Cowboys who ride through portals on the backs of both Red Dragons and Giant Metal ships, stealing everything from everyone. Exactly like the pirate from Treasure Planet. They do the same thing. As they see it, eons of freedom were stolen from them and now they deserve whatever they can wrench from the hands of others. The incredible thread here, that you notice if you think in an abstract way, is that the Gith haven't changed. At all. Originally, they were slaves to the Illithid, and were forced to build cathedrals or raid other worlds for slaves and brains. They broke free in an explosion of bloodshed and went two separate ways. The zealous Gith Zerai, who follow their leader without question, and build temples by straining their brains. 
and the zealous Githyankai, who follow their leader without question and raid other worlds for slaves. Says a bit about learning from history, but in an ironic way, they have no other history. So how do you learn a lesson you've never been told? You can't, and so they repeat. And that's basically Gith. Hey, it's me not reading off the script. I'm going to PAX Unplugged in like two days, so I made the video a little bit shorter to compensate. Here's 10 seconds of me flubbing up the script. The Zealoth Gis- Z And the Zealoth Githyanki. No, my God. The Zealoth- Fuck. This subrace is so stupidly zen, they marched into lib- Almost said libido.